In this little extra, I want to look at the digestive tract of the bird. Okay, starting out up here in the mouth, we're going to have the tongue. So we go into basically the oral cavity, the oral pharynx region. And then we come down into the esophagus. I'm going to cover the digestive tract again histologically in another lecturette. Here we have the esophagus. We drop down then into the crop. Owls, gulls, and penguins do not have crops. We find that in pigeons, the digested food and fat-laden epithelial cells create what is known as crop milk, which is then regurgitated to feed their nestlings for their first few days. This crop milk from pigeons contains more protein and fat than either cow or human milk. Some other birds, such as flamingos and penguins, they also have the ability to produce a milk to feed the young, but it's not produced in a crop. It is produced from secretions of glands in the esophagus. From the crop, we will go then into the stomach. We will see that in flesh and fish eating animals, they have more of a simple stomach for chemical digestion, whereas in seed eating birds, the stomach is divided into a digestive portion, such as we see here, the proventriculus, and then also a muscular grinding portion known as the ventriculus. We'll have a closer look at those in a bit, okay? From the junction of these, we then go into the duodenum. We'll see we have both a descending and an ascending duodenum. And between those two portions, we then have a pancreas. From here, we go into the jejunum. We'll have a better look at all of these in a bit. Here we see the liver. The liver has both a right and a left lobe joined dorsally on the midline. And we can also see here the gallbladder. Okay, gallbladder is located on the visceral surface of the right lobe of the liver. We don't see a gallbladder in pigeons, parrots, budgeries, or the struthioniforms, which are the ostriches, emus, rheas, cassowaries, and kiwis. Okay, so none of them have a gallbladder. Let's have another look here. Once again, the proventriculus and the ventriculus. Ventriculus is also known as the gizzard. You then have the duodenum and the pancreas. The junum, once again, is the longest portion. And then between the two cica, we have the ilium. Okay, so yeah, birds have blind ended sacs, but they have two of them. Okay, so plural is cica. Those cica are then going to come and join the ilium. And from there, on distally is going to be the colorectum. Okay, some refer to it the colon, some refer to it as a rectum. Sometimes you hear it called the colorectum. Okay, and this is going to dump into the cloaca. Cloaca basically means sewer because we have the poop dumped here, we have the urates from the urinary tract dumped here, we have our genital tract empties here as well. So it's kind of <laughs> everything gets dumped here. We can also see in this picture the spleen. Okay, in this next image, I've stretched out the digestive tract and I've opened up the stomach. So we can see here the proventriculus. The proventriculus, this is where the glands are that secrete both pepsin and hydrochloric acid. So this is the digestive portion. The ventriculus, the very muscular portion that's used for grinding. We can see often little pebbles are contained in here that help in that grinding process. So birds will take in little pebbles that will then be stored here to help with the grinding. 
the inner surface is covered by a layer that is secreted by glands in the ventriculus and this surface is known as coiling right near the junction of the two is the opening into the duodenum so the seed's going to move back and forth between the grinding portion of the stomach and the digestive portion back and forth until the particles get small enough that they can be taken into the duodenum which is at that junction as we saw before we have a descending and an ascending portion which surrounds the pancreas the digestive enzymes of the pancreas are going to be deposited in the more distal portion of the ascending as is bile okay that is where these all come together for the digestive process so once again we see the jejunum makes up the largest portion of the digestive tract we then have our ileum which is coursing between the two cica so within our cica this is where bacterial breakdown of cellulose is going to occur and then those come together and then we go into the colorectum just as in mammals this is where water and electrolyte absorption occurs and then into the cloaca so there you have the avian digestive tract